Is the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G worth buying in 2023? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Now, since being launched in September of 2022, the Galaxy A23 5G has been a huge success for Samsung, and it definitely makes sense why. Despite this phone being a budget device, we're really getting a lot of value here, and I'm looking forward to going over all the reasons why throughout this video. Now, this device is being offered factory unlocked, but also in addition to that, you can get it from a variety of different carriers. Now, both Samsung and the various carriers tend to run different deals on this device and others, of course. And I will be leaving links to this phone in the video description so you can see the most up-to-date pricing and availability. Now, with this device, we're getting a very large 6.6-inch display, and it is featuring Corning Grill Glass 5, which does make it extra durable. Now, the display technology used here is PLS LCD, However, this device does feature a 120 hertz refresh rate. So we're getting a very fast and smooth refresh rate here with the device. And that's something that you really don't find that often in the budget segment. Not only is the refresh rate really fast here, but we're also getting a 1080p display. So things are very crisp and clear. We have a PPI of 400. We have a 20 by nine aspect ratio. So a more narrow but taller form factor, which really makes this phone ideal for social media and we're getting an 82.5% screen to body ratio. So we do have a water drop notch up top here and a little bit of a thicker bottom bezel, but overall, this phone has a really practical design. Now, even though the display technology that we're getting isn't necessarily the best out there, as it would have been nice to see AMOLED, we're still getting really good viewing angles when looking at the display of the device. So in general, I think Samsung really did an awesome job with the display that we're getting here with the phone. And of course, having such a large canvas at 6.6 .6 inches really makes this phone especially useful, whether that's watching video content or going on social media or reading an ebook, all those various things are gonna be a lot easier on a device with a larger display so that everything's bigger and easier to read and see. And while this phone doesn't necessarily have the most innovative or original design out there, it's really clear here that Samsung really focused on giving us the best internals possible while still making this a budget phone. Now the front facing camera that we're getting on the device is 8 megapixels and definitely take a look at my full review video here in the channel about this device to see a variety of different photo and video samples from it. But in general, I've been really happy with the various cameras that we're getting, especially considering that this is a budget device. Now internally with the phone, we're getting 64 gigabytes of storage, but in addition to that, this device does support micro SD card expansion, so you can always offload photos and videos if you want to onto a micro SD card. Now, unfortunately, with this phone, there is no wireless charging, but we do have a fingerprint sensor on the power button. So we'll give that a try right now. Very quick, one more time. So very accurate. And in addition to having the fingerprint sensor, this phone also has face unlock. So I do appreciate that we have multiple methods here for accessing the phone. Now, on the back of the device, we have a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 123 degrees, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera for close up images. Now, this phone does support portrait mode for both the rear and front facing cameras, so if you're a big fan of that feature, just know that you are getting that here with the phone. So, here's how things look on the camera app on the device with the main camera right now. Then from here, we can switch over to the ultra wide angle camera to fit a lot more content into the frame. Then we can switch over to the more tab to access the macro camera for those close up images. And then in addition to that, we have portrait mode for blurred out backgrounds. And then we can also flip around and take portrait selfies as well. Now you also have the ability to adjust the blur effect for the portrait mode here. We also have a group selfie option which crops things out a little bit for the front camera. And we can also, of course, take standard selfies too if you don't want that portrait mode effect. Now, one thing that is unfortunate with this device is that there is no 4K video recording. So if you currently have that with your phone and you're expecting that every new phone has 4K video recording, then just know that we're not getting that here with the A23 5G. Now, as far as RAM and processor go, with this device, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM paired up with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor. Now, as the name of the processor and this device imply, this phone is compatible with 5G networks. Now, overall, I think you can still get by without 5G. However, if you're gonna go out of your way to buy a brand new smartphone, 
then you might as well get a phone that does support your carrier's latest and greatest network. Now as far as the actual performance of the device with that processor goes, I'm definitely very impressed. You have to consider, of course, that this is a budget device. Now, if this same processor was in a $1,000 smartphone, for example, then that's definitely not worth it. But for a lower end phone, the Snapdragon 695 really does a great job. Of course, it's got to power that 120 hertz display, which it does an excellent job at. This phone really doesn't have any lag, or at least minimal lag, which is pretty unheard of for a phone that's under $300. And I would say for the majority of people out there, this device will definitely get the job done. Now, if you are more of a power user, if you're someone that's always on your smartphone, then yeah, you can probably justify spending a bit more on a device. But if you're somebody that just wants a good, reliable, affordable phone, this phone really is very competitive. Now, I did run a benchmark test using Geekbench 5, and I'll show you the scores from that test right now. Here they are right there. And what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone, and then compare your scores to these scores to get a better idea of whether or not the Galaxy A23 5G is going to be a performance upgrade for you. Because who knows, your current phone might be faster than this phone. It really depends on what you're coming from. Now this device features a very large 5000 mAh internal battery, so if you're looking to get a device that will last a full day, if not two days, then this is definitely a good option for you, as we are getting a very large battery with the phone. Another awesome feature that we're getting with the Galaxy A23 5G is NFC. So if you like to make mobile contactless payments using services such as Samsung Pay or Google Pay, you can definitely do that here with this phone. And that's another feature that you don't always find with lower end devices. But I know for me at least, that's my preferred method of making payments when I'm out and about. So any device that has NFC is definitely a really great thing from my perspective. Now here's the box the phone does come in. You might've noticed that it is a very slim box. And the reason for that is because there is no wall adapter included. So we do have a SIM card removal tool. And then we also have a quick start guide and also a double-sided USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. The only thing is, is that if you don't have a wall adapter that supports USB-C, then you are gonna have to go out and buy one on your own. So just be aware of that. But let's now talk a bit more about the actual hardware itself with this device. Now I already talked quite a bit about the front panel here. Of course, we've got that excellent looking 6.6 .6 inch 1080p display, which is PLS LCD at 120 hertz. And then we do have Gorilla Glass 5 for the display itself. Now the rest of the phone is made completely out of plastic. Now I understand why that is. Of course, this is a lower end device, so they have to give it more affordable materials. So as far as the phone being made out of plastic, I think they did the best job that they could while making the phone still feel of decent quality. That being said though, plastic is more prone to picking up various scratches, so I do recommend pairing this phone up with a case so that you can get the most longevity out of it. But taking a look at the left side of the device, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. On the right side of the phone, we have volume up, volume down, and also the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint sensor. Up top here, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of the device, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and the speaker. Now it's definitely becoming more and more difficult to find mobile devices that feature a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but if you do have traditional wired headphones, then just know that you can indeed use them here with the Galaxy A23 5G. So in conclusion, I definitely think the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G is still an excellent phone to consider in 2023. This device, right out of the gate, has been very competitive. I really like that we're getting that 120 hertz refresh rate display, but beyond that, the display looks fantastic. It's super bright. We have great viewing angles as well, and really this is about as good as it can get in this particular segment. I also appreciate that we have so many different cameras with this device. Not only do we have a really good 8 megapixel selfie camera, but also having a quad camera set up on the back of the phone really gives us a lot of different options. Now sure, none of these cameras necessarily can compete or even comparable with a much more expensive phone, like a $1,000 phone from Samsung, but at the same time, if you find yourself using all these various cameras all the time, then that definitely can give you more of a justification to spend more money on a more premium phone the next time around. But if you don't know that you're even going to be using any of these features, then you might as well go for a more affordable device like this one instead of buying a really expensive phone and then learning later that most of the features that you're paying a premium for aren't even features that you care to use. But this concludes my video on the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G in 2023. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a great rest of your day.